In this Excel file, we have a user form that appears when you click this part information button. There is a part drop down that has two columns. The first column shows a part ID number, and the second is a part description. Below that, we have a location combo box with a single column list of locations. We're going to look at how those drop down lists are created and appear when you open this user form. In the workbook, there is a sheet called Lookup Lists, and that's where the information is stored. Here's the location list, and we can add items to that or change what's there. Also on this worksheet is the part ID list, and beside each ID is its description. And again, we can add items, change them, delete them. So these lists might be updated daily or monthly. We want our user form to always have the current information. In the Visual Basic Editor, you can see the user form that we've created. There is a part combo box named CBO part and a location combo box named CBO location. To see the code, I'll right click on the form and click view code. The code is stored in the user form initialize procedure. And that means it will run automatically when we open that user form. So this will help us keep the list up to date. We won't have to manually update these lists. At the top, we've created three variables. The first one C part is a range, and that refers to those ID numbers on the worksheet. The C loc range is in the location list range on the worksheet. We've also created a WS variable for the worksheet, and we've set that to that lookup lists worksheet. So first we're going to create the items in the location dropdown. And here we're saying for each range in that location list named range. So really this is each cell in that range. We want something to happen. First, it we're telling it where information should go. So in that CBO location control, and me is the user form. So in the forms location combo box, we want to add an item. And we'll use the value in whatever cell the code is currently looking at. So the first location would be the first item in the list, then it's going to go back through this loop again for the second and so on to the bottom of the list. For the part combo box, we are going to use the C part variable. It's going to represent each cell as we go through the part ID list named range. And here we're going to use the user forms CBO part control. Again, as it goes through each cell in that list, it's going to add an item with the value from that cell. So it'll put in the part ID number. We want a second column, so we also will add, add that value by using the list method. That adds the value in the next column, and the value that it's going to use is by looking at whatever cell we're in now, and then going over one column to the right, zero rows down, and getting the value there, which will be its part description. We tell it where to go in the drop down list by using the list count. So, how many items are in there already, and which column. So, which row should it go in, and which column. The row and column numbering in the list starts at zero. So, we want this in the second column. The first column is zero, second column is numbered one. Same thing for the rows. We're going to look at the list count. So if this is the first item in the list, we subtract one, that goes in row zero. 
this when we're at the second item we'll subtract one and it will be in row number one which is really the second row so that's how we get the two columns into the part drop down list at the end of this code we also fill in those other two boxes that are on the user form in the text date box we put in the current date and format it as a medium date and in the quantity box we put a default quantity of one and the final thing we do is for that combo part drop down we set the focus there which moves the cursor to that combo box so it's ready to go when someone opens this user form.